Welcome parents, students, community partners, and guests to the Wake Forest Pre-College Programs Information Session. I am Kyla Hollingsworth, Executive Director of Pre-College Programs. We are delighted to have you join us today to learn about the Wake Forest University Pre-College Summer Programs. This summer, we will operate in person and can't wait to meet your students. During this webinar, please use the question and answer feature to ask questions throughout. There's no need to hold your questions until, until the end of our presentation. Our professional staff are panelists and on hand to answer your questions in real time. Now, let's dive in. Good evening, everyone. My name is Betsy Schneider. I am program director of the Wake Forest Summer Immersion Program for high school students. As many of you know, the Summer Immersion Program allows high schoolers to dive into different career pathways or fields of study. And we are so excited this summer to be offering 18 different institutes back on campus for this summer, summer 2022. The past two summers we've been online so we are so excited to be back on campus with high school students from across the country and around the world. I'll pass it off to my colleague, Lizzie Randolph, as we are going to cover both our high school programs as well as our middle school programs during this information session this evening. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Lizzie Randolph, and I'm the program manager for our summer exploration program for middle school students. Summer Exploration is our newest pre-college program, and again, we can't stress enough how excited we are to be on campus this summer. Um, thank you again for being here and for learning more about our programs for high school and middle school students. This summer, we're excited to offer six different STEM-themed adventure options for students, and we can't wait to dive into more information. All right, so Wake Forest University pre-college programs has some main objectives for the students that we serve over the summer. The first objective is experience and exposure. We are really trying to allow students to gain some clarity and insight about the things that um, they are most passionate about. So allowing them to gain some enrichment without the pressure of homework or papers or readings. We're trying to make this really, really fun and really, really insightful. Um, another one of our core objectives is building a network. Students are able to not only interact with um, really esteemed Wake Forest faculty and staff, but also professionals from so many different fields of study. And at the end of the week, we ensure that students are walking away with a Rolodex of sorts of contact information. So we ensure that students have all of the guest presenters and faculty members that they've interacted with the, um, their contact information. So they're able to keep in touch with them, um, have them serve as mentors. Um, and also uh, we try to really instill um, professional skills in our students um, throughout the week as well. So we do ask that students write handwritten thank you notes to all of the guest presenters that they interact with throughout the week. So experience and exposure and build a network are two of our main objectives and I'll let Lizzie cover um, the second two. Right, additionally, participation in our pre-college programs allows students to start preparing for college. So students are able to take advantage of learning about the college experience while experiencing life as a demon deacon. So students are living in our dorms, they're eating in our dining hall throughout the week, which really gives them a hands-on experience about what living on a college campus is like. Additionally, our programs allow students to leave knowing more about their, themselves, their interests and potential career pathways that they could see themselves in in the future. All right, so now we're going to dive into our fast facts. We acknowledge that our audience is quite broad tonight, so we know that we have some students are already registered. We have some students and families who are just trying to learn a little bit more about what we offer. So bear with us. We are going to cover a broad um, base of information. So 
who um, we do serve middle school and high school students for both of our distinctive programs. Current sixth, seventh, and eighth graders can apply for the summer exploration program. Current ninth through twelfth graders can apply for the summer immersion program. As we've mentioned previously, we are offering week long programs. So they're very digestible um, lengths of time for students who we acknowledge have very busy summers. So um, they are just week long programs. Um, and they dive into different for high school students. We're diving into different career pathways and fields of study. So experiencing um, a career or a potential major for a high school student, while our middle schoolers are able to dive into different STEM theme topics. Um, and we'll dive into all of the different offerings later in the presentation. This summer, we are offering both day and overnight programs for our students. So those local to Winston-Salem or maybe some students who might not feel comfortable staying in the dorms yet um, are able to utilize that day option. And our programs are running in the months of June and July. Our first week of programming will be June 12th. Our last week of programming will be July 24th. All of our programming this summer will take place on campus at Wake Forest University in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. We do have an online option available through Kaplan for high school students. Additionally, you can see some highlights on our application process here. So we do not require a transcript or any test scores for students to apply for either program. We have a free online application for both summer exploration and summer immersion. A teacher, counselor, or head of school recommendation is required, and we do also require um, essays. So students that are applying for our summer immersion program, high school students will have to submit two essays, whereas our middle school students applying for the summer exploration program will only need to submit one essay. Lastly, we don't have a um, application deadline. We review applications on a rolling basis and admit students until all weeks are filled. All right, so um, my team knows that I am very passionate about the 18 institutes that we offer. Um, we work all year long creating really, really exciting um, programming for high school students, and we work hand in hand with faculty members. So um, that's the first thing I want to say. I'm going to quickly glaze over each of these different institutes, but one thing that really differentiates Wake Forest pre-college programs and the summer immersion program from other um, uh, pre-college programs at universities across the country is that we are selecting Wake Forest most popular faculty members and or professionals in a given field of study. So we're really trying to find people that are going to inspire students to get excited about learning over the summer. So I'm going to quickly um, go through each of our 18 institutes and I would really, really encourage you um, to ask questions in the chat. I'm not going to be able to get into the nitty gritty details about each of the institutes, but feel free to ask questions in the chat. We have a bunch of professional staff members who are very, very knowledgeable about the activities, the field trips, um, the things that students are able to do in each of these weeks. So feel free to utilize that tool as we move forward. Um, first, we'll dive into our STEM themed institutes because those are probably our most popular out of out of all of our programming and we have the most amount of STEM themed institutes. So biosciences and engineering really delves into the basic sciences and students are able to start in the chemistry lab and then travel to the Wake Forest Institute for regenerative medicine to see how organs are being grown out of different types of cells and finally seeing how that is translated into industry. Uh, health and exercise science is based in our HES department where students are in the anatomy lab. They're learning about body systems and able to participate in some really, really cool labs behind the scenes at Wake Forest Athletics. Medicine um, is led by two physicians who also teach in the School of Medicine and students are able to have an entire day at the School of Medicine doing simulations like a birthing simulation, um, an ultrasound lab. Um, that third year medical school, school students get to do. So that's, it's a really, really fantastic program. Neuroscience students are able to do a brain dissection and learn about the nervous system um, and learn all about sensory and perception and how the brain works.
Moving on to our, our next slide that covers STEM Institute's um, sports medicine is a little bit more focused on in the field of orthopedics, led by Dr. Brian Waterman, who's an orthopedic surgeon. Students are able to do a splinting and taping lab, an ultrasound lab. They also are hosted in the School of Medicine. So for students who, who might wanna get a little bit more focused, uh, sports medicine is a great option. Technology, um, students are able to do lots with a microcontroller throughout the week. They gradually will build, will do Java and Python coding. And we also get to hear from professionals who are working in a lot of the most innovative tech companies like Google and different uh, companies out in Silicon Valley. So that's really fun to kind of tap into our Wake Forest network and speak with alumni who are doing cool things in, in tech. Uh, psychology is led by two of our most um, enthusiastic professors in the psychology department at Wake Forest and students are able to do an observational study where they actually are um, you know, observing human behavior and tracking it and kind of talking about how um, how behavior affects different things in society. Um, virtual reality is a, is a brand new institute and you need to have an Oculus Quest 2 in order to participate in the virtual reality um, institute, but it's going to be really, really cool. Lots of different experiences that students will get to do um, in the metaverse, as we like to say. Moving on into our business themed institutes. So we have a business institute that is really diving into so many different facets of business from strategy to marketing to finance and accounting and operations. So someone who thinks they may want to pursue business in the future or major in business, this is a great program. Entrepreneurship is led by our director of the Entrepreneurship Center, Dr. Dan Cohen, who is fantastic and has written books about ideation. Students are able to do a deek tank um, where they come up with a with an idea and then pitch to a panel of judges by the end of the week. Uh, finance and investing, students will do a portfolio competition with their fellow classmates and um, learn lots about the stock market and different things related to finance and investing. And lastly, sports marketing is um, led by the former athletic director for UConn and students pair partner with Wake Forest Athletics and do a consulting project for one of our teams and then pitch to Wake Forest Athletics by the end of the week. Moving into our civic engagement institutes, we offer debate and public advocacy led by Justin Green, who's our head debate coach at Wake Forest. And this program is really allowing students to practice the art of debate. So students will be you know, speaking for the entire program, practicing, doing different arguments. We do travel to the School of Law for one day. Um, the Law Institute is led by a faculty member in the School of Law. Students will participate in Socratic style courses to really get an idea about what it might be like and feel like to be in law school. Leadership is a really awesome program for any student who might not have a clear idea of what they wanna major in or what they wanna pursue in their future. So at the beginning of the week, it's a lot of introspection, a lot of um, assessments like the MBTI or Strengths Finder assessments, moving into what are my strengths? What am I passionate about? How can I take these things and kind of figure out what I wanna pursue in the future? Um, students will do lots of team building and professional, um, professional learnings. And then we'll also do a whole day dedicated to servant leadership and service. So leadership is just a really great um, way for students to kind of figure out what it is they may want to pursue in the future. And lastly, policy and politics is led by a political science um, professor. So diving into the US Constitution, talking about rights, um, talking a lot about current events and what's going on in the world. Lastly, um, communication institutes. We are offering a film institute led by a professor in the um, communications department, Thomas Sutherland, who is actually um, making a film over the summer. So we're only offering one week of film, but students will have the opportunity to really learn a lot from his experience. Um, and then they'll be screenwriting and making mini films each and every day. So lots of hands-on. Students will walk away with their own short film and we'll do a screening on Friday. And Writing for Life is led by Erin Branch, who's the director of the Writing Center at Wake Forest. And so this is a lot of interdisciplinary writing. So students are going to be thinking about writing in many different areas of, of life. And um, 
lots of coaching and lots. It's a smaller institute, so students will get that one on one kind of personalized learning experience during during both of these. They're smaller institutes, so hopefully I wasn't too long winded, but they are all so fantastic. Um, we're going to watch a short video about the summer immersion program now, and then we'll pass it off to Lizzie to hear about the six um, summer exploration programs. Summer Immersion Program is a program designed for high school sophomores, juniors, and seniors, giving them the opportunity to take a deep dive into a particular career path. Coming in here, I thought, oh, we might it might just be classroom, but we are rarely just in the classroom. I really enjoyed visiting the different businesses around Charlotte. My favorite experience has been the Whitewater Center. Visiting the Panther Stadium. We toured operating rooms. We're getting out and about, going up to Winston-Salem to see the campus. Wake Forest is the uh, just beautiful campus. It just feels like a whole new discovery for me and I'm really having a great time. The best experience for me was going to the robotics, the first zone. The Sports Institute has been really helpful for giving me a really broad picture of how the medical career would be. I get to do things that other kids in my high school and the nation couldn't really do. I have found all of the presenters very interesting. You really just, you can't go around just find these people who are coming in to talk to us. Many of our students have walked away from this opportunity with internships, shadowing opportunities, and a lifelong mentor. This program is to immerse them into a particular field, but it's also, you know, getting them into being lifelong learners. Seeing their eyes light up when they learn about something that might be a future career path for them is really exciting for me. I think the faculty got a tremendous amount of satisfaction out of seeing the kids energized, informed, excited. It makes me feel great to see and hear the feedback from both students as well as parents that they leave the camp by Friday feeling as if a light bulb had gone off. It's a fun eye-opening experience. There's nothing else like this. It changes your life without summer immersion and never would have been in this position. I know I'm a visual learner, so hopefully that video gave you a better sense of, of what students can expect over the summer. It's lots of hands on. It's lots of behind the scenes. Um, just hoping that they have a really, really fantastic experience. So I do want to say um, now that we've gotten so excited about all of our institutes, we do have many institutes that we have had to implement waitlist for. Um, this being our first summer back on campus after two summers online, we have received an unprecedented number of applications. And so you can see that we do have waitlists implemented for medicine, neuroscience, psychology, sports, medicine, and film. But we have lots of space available in all of the other institutes listed below. Um, so uh, feel free to reach out if you have specific questions about institutes um, that still have space. And um, we'll kind of go into more information about the waitlist process at a later time. We also offer um, an online immersion program. And so we definitely know that Winston-Salem, North Carolina isn't the easiest place to get to. We, we have served students from all 50 states and over 28 countries. So we do um, know that offering online options for students allows students to experience without having to travel um, to Wake Forest. So we are offering asynchronous online courses um, throughout the entire school year and over the summer. This summer, um, and actually right now, students are able to participate in biosciences, business, finance, medicine, heart, medicine, cancer, psychology, sports medicine, and women's health. And um, all of these courses are asynchronous, meaning students will choose their own schedule to complete the 30 hours of coursework. They can either complete that 30 hours of coursework in two-week segments or four-week segments. So um, 
That's kind of how that works. Students are also paired with Wake Forest undergraduate students who are called course mentors who are majoring in um, the specific field that the students are taking and they can go to office hours and have live Zoom, Zoom sessions with those course mentors. So if they are confused about something in the course or have questions or just want to hear about what it's like at Wake Forest, students are able to go to those office hours and speak with their course mentor. Lastly, um, students do have to complete a capstone project in order to complete or in order to receive their Wake Forest um, certificate of completion. I will also say that all of our institutes and all of our online courses are not for credit. So students walk away with a certificate of completion, but um, you do not get college credit for participating in any of our programs. Okay, switching gears now to our STEM themed adventures for our middle school students with the summer exploration program. Again, I'll do a quick overview of our six different options. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us or drop a question in the chat. Um, our first adventure option that we'll go through is STEM exploration. So students will be explore, exploring all facets of STEM this week with a different STEM topic each day of the week. Our NASA Astro Camp is a curriculum that we have provided through NASA, so students will be completing design challenges and labs related to astrophysics, earth science, and more. Our engineering and robotics week, students will be collaborating with peers to build Lego robots. And we'll also be designing an engineering project through the game Minecraft. Next, we have sustainable gardening stem from the roots. So for those students who want to roll up their sleeves and spend time in Wake Forest campus garden, students will really be using the garden as a classroom this week, learning the science behind a successful harvest. Sports and science will allow students to explore a variety of health and exercise science related topics while also meeting with current student athletes during the week. And lastly, we have our medical mysteries adventure, which will Discuss, students will discover careers in healthcare and explore topics related to epidemiology, genetics, and more. In our next slide, we will have a quick um, video of one of our SCP alum from our 2021 online program. One activity in particular that stood out to me was during the first week, um, we, through the teacher's help, uh, were able to extract DNA from strawberries. Um, we did on the order of an hour experiment, and by the end, we could see and pick up um, strands of DNA from the strawberry that I bought at my local supermarket like the night before. Um, it was it was so cool. It was so unique. Um, I, I definitely recommend this program. The summer exploration is top quality education that is it's fun, it's exciting, it makes you want to learn. Um, you explore areas and topics like I did that you might not choose to explore otherwise. Um, I just I can't stress enough how much fun it was um, to be with other brilliant students who had a passion to learn and brought in their experiences. That was a quick um, clip of one of our alum from last year. Um, as you can see, we have a couple other student quotes listed here, but our pre-college programs team really values our student feedback. We collect pre and post student surveys to really let students reflect on what the most impactful experiences were for them while participating with us this summer. All right, so here you can see a sample um, schedule for a day in the life. Our day and overnight um, students participate in the same curriculum. So um, the only difference is our overnight students will join us on Sunday. Check-in is from 3 to 5 p.m. on the Sunday prior to the start of the Institute. And then Monday through, uh, Monday through Friday, students participate in actual um, content and curriculum. And typically our day runs from around 9 uh, a.m. until around 4.30 p.m. And checkout is on is at 12 noon on Friday. 
Um, so as we have both mentioned, um, the day really consists of, yes, we're in the classroom a little bit, but we're also doing a lot of labs, a lot of hands on activities. We're hearing from undergraduate students. We're hearing from graduate students, researchers and professionals, and then we're going out and about in, in the community and on campus. So trying to make it really, really active for students. Um, the other thing that high school students get to do during their time with us on campus is they students will um, go to uh, undergraduate admissions and receive an official Wake Forest University um, undergraduate admissions information session and an official campus tour. Um, so that is one thing that our high school students will get to do while they're with us on campus. Additionally, each evening we will offer structured evening activities for students that participate in our overnight program. Our evening activities are led by our program ambassadors. And as you can see, we offer a variety of activities for students to participate in, including everything from sports and games to a college scholarship workshop, um, really providing students with a variety of opportunities to continue to build relationships with students as well as the program ambassadors um, through additional activities in the evening for students. So um, we definitely know that students are excited to be living on a college campus over the summer and gaining that insight and clarity about what it's like to live on a, on a college campus is one of the biggest parts of the week. Um, so students do live in our residence halls. Our high schoolers will be in South Residence Hall and Babcock Residence Hall and our middle schoolers will be in Luter Residence Hall. Um, students are able to eat in our dining hall and as Lizzie mentioned, we'll do evening activities on the quad. So they're getting a really, really good feeling for what it's like to be um, a Wake Forest University student for a week. Um, our South and Babcock residence halls for high school students, those are traditional double rooms. Uh, each, each double has a sink and a, a mini fridge and we do assign roommates to students. Um, we are allowing students to request roommates up until April 29th, but after the April 29th uh, cutoff deadline, we will um, no longer accept roommate requests and we will kind of mimic the traditional um, freshman year experience where you have to live with a stranger on campus. Um, and our looter residence hall for our middle school students, uh, students will be, be in suite style rooms with three other students. So there will be four students and each, uh, each group of students will share a bathroom. All right, so I know many of you may be wondering what safety and supervision looks like. Um, this may or may not be the first overnight program that you send your child to. Um, so we just want to stress that safety and supervision is a top priority for us. Um, you can expect that we will have updated um, COVID protocols that will be communicated based on um, university health and safety protocols that will be in place for the summer. So um, we will have more communication on that by the end of this week. We also want to stress that we offer um, overnight supervision in both our um, dorms for middle and high school students. So we hire resident assistants that will always be on call and patrolling the halls overnight to ensure supervision. And of course, we have our Wake Forest University Police Department available 24 seven in any case of emergency. Another huge part of the summer immersion program and the summer exploration program is the fact that we hire Wake Forest undergraduate students to serve as our camp counselors over the summer. We call them program ambassadors. And so it's really, really impactful for students to be mentored and build relationships with actual Wake Forest students who are typically majoring in similar fields that these students um, are wanting to pursue in their own lives. Um, we have an estimated ratio of students to program ambassadors of 10 to 1. So typically we have 10 students to every one program ambassador that we hire. 
Um, we also hire resident, um, resident assistants who, as Lizzie mentioned, are patrolling the halls at night. In addition, our entire professional staff um, will be present throughout the summer, just making sure that everyone is having a really fantastic time. So as students are anxiously awaiting arrival on campus, um, we do want to share some important information that will help as students and families are preparing um, to arrive on our campus. So um, just so that everyone is aware, um, once a student applies and is accepted and registers for a program, either with our summer immersion program or our summer exploration program, there will be information available on their student status page. So all of our logistic information, um, including our packing list, our planning packets, and required checklist items are found on the student status page. One of those required forms that is very important to complete is the travel and transportation survey. This form lets us know how each student will be arriving to our campus. That being said, uh, we do offer shuttle transportation to and from the Piedmont Triad Airport. So we will have staff available on the shuttle to meet students at the airport uh, and get them safely um, to and from the airport to campus. Um, but again, that information is collected from our travel and transportation survey. So we need to make sure that all students are completing that um, as we prepare. We will, again, the packing list and additional information can also be found on that student status page. Um, and additional details, if you are um, not yet registered or haven't completed the application process, can also be found on our FAQ page. So both our websites, our summer exploration and summer immersion websites um, have FAQ pages where you can find that additional um, campus information as students are preparing to arrive on our campus. Um, any additional questions that you will have about shuttle logistics um, or other information, please feel free to, to ask us um, in the chat or you know let one of our staff members know. Um, lastly, we um, just want to communicate that we were ranked a top 30 pre-college summer program. And so we we truly value the experiences that are created at Wake Forest University over the summer for middle and high school students. And um, you know, the aim the aim for this summer is that students walk away with a better sense of clarity, um, a better sense of who they want to be, what their goals may be for the future. And so just know that as a staff and as a university, we are really trying to create truly meaningful opportunities for your students to become the people that they're meant to be. Here you all can see um, our social media information. If you all would please like to follow us on any of our social media platforms, um, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, um, and Facebook. So please um, take a moment if you have social media accounts and would like to follow us to stay in the loop and receive updates um, as we continue to post information as we prepare for our summer programming. And lastly, here is our contact information. So um, we definitely want to be able to answer any outstanding questions that you all have as we get closer to summer. Um, if you're registered and you're excited to join us this summer, or if you haven't even started the application, we are um, excited to be able to talk to you, get to know you and answer your questions about um, the summer immersion program and the summer exploration program. So please find our contact information below and we we would love to get in touch
Parents, students, that concludes the informational portion of our webinar this evening. If you do have questions, feel free to ask them in the chat or the question and answer session. You can see that both Lizzie and Betsy's email address and telephone numbers are on the screen. Thank you so much for your interest and for many, many, many students that have registered for the summer. We can't wait to meet you this, um, this summer and um, have a good evening. We'll stick around though. If you have any additional questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. So I see one really great question from um, from Peyton. Um, Peyton is asking how many students are in each individual program. So that really varies based on the program. So our biggest institute will be 50 students. So for example, business is a program that has 50 students as well as medicine. We're really constrained because Wake Forest has very small classroom sizes. 50 is the largest classroom size that we can accommodate at Wake because we treat, we value that the small class sizes. Um, the smallest institute that we have is 18. So that's the, our Writing for Life Institute is 18 students. So they range from 18 all the way up um, to 50. I see another question from Holly asking um, about instructions for recommendations. Um, so when a student is applying for the summer immersion or the summer exploration program, what they'll do is they'll put down the name and email address of a teacher, school counselor, or administrator at their school, and we will send them an automated email with a specialized link for your student. So we'll automate that process for you. So, you know, I always encourage students to give their teacher or counselor a heads up that our email will be coming through. But otherwise, you know, a formal recommendation letter is not required. It's just a very brief form that the educator will complete um, for your student. Audrey has a great question about travel. Um, can a student travel alone by air if they are mature enough to get in and out of security? So for our high schoolers, um, you know, we ask that they are not listed as accompanied minors. We will meet students in baggage claim and shuttle them to campus. Um, but yes, um, if a student is mature enough to travel alone, we would ask that they meet us in in um, baggage claim and then as we mentioned you know requesting a seat on a shuttle in the travel and transportation survey and then we make sure that you know our roster of students is is all there and then we travel to campus together Betsy, we got a great question in the chat. Um, how are these programs viewed by admissions directors when applying to colleges? Sure, that is such a great question. Um, so, you know, any, any college wants students who are excited about learning, curious, driven, motivated. Um, you know, any college or institution wants students who are going to contribute to a learning environment. Um, you know, be excited about content and passionate about learning something new, especially over the summer. It shows it definitely shows drive um, and motivation. So what I'll say about participating in the summer immersion program is, um, you know, a lot of colleges and institutions have something called demonstrated interest. So by participating in a summer immersion program, that's an example of demonstrated interest. So you're showing um, you know, you're showing that you're interested in wake by joining us for a week over the summer. And um, that's definitely something positive, whether you're interested in coming to wake or really any other institution. Does that answer your question? And Valeria, feel free um, to continue to um, kind of 
find some questions that would be great, great for the entire group and feel free to, to let me know if there are any others in the chat. I see there's one question regarding our middle school summer exploration program and the enrollment. So our middle school programs are a little smaller um, than our high school programs and provide that professional and personal one on one attention. So our middle school summer exploration programs will enroll between 20 and 40 students per week, whereas our high, our high school programs can enroll between 18 and 60 students per week. Another question I see in the chat. Um, Asks, will we learn about different types of medical pathways in the medicine institute? That's here, Lizzie. Do you want to answer that one? Sure. So, in the medicine institute, we are hearing from a wide variety of practitioners. So, lots of different types of physicians. Um, we hear from physician assistants, PAs. We hear from CRNAs, um, registered nurses. Um, so, a lot of different pathways um, and a lots, lots of different types of physicians. The program is actually led by um, Dr. Roy Stroud, who's a neuro oncologist, and Dr. Lindsay Stroud, who's a dermatologist. So, that just kind of is representation of the different kinds of varieties of medical professionals that you'll hear, hear from throughout the week. You'll also hear from med school students and residents. So, you kind of get to know what the pathway is. Um, you know, going from pre-med in college to medical school to residency um, to potentially fellowship and then, you know, um, being an actual uh, physician or practitioner of medicine. Thanks so much, Betsy, for answering that question. There's another question in the chat where parents are asking if they can tour campus if they drop off their student in person. Our drop-off is on Sunday afternoon and oftentimes Guided tours are not led on Sundays. You are welcome to download the self guided tour and tour campus on Sunday when you drop off and then pick up is Friday afternoon and you'll need to schedule a guided tour through the admissions office if you choose to do so on Friday. The campus is an open campus, so you are welcome to always participate in a self guided tour. Um, however, Sunday is drop off and Friday is pick up and you will have to individually coordinate a guided tour through the admissions office. And then I also see a question regarding for incoming wake freshmen, would you recommend we do the summer immersion program or the pre orientation program or both? I would suggest both the summer immersion program is very different than the pre orientation program. The summer immersion program is hands on. It's focused in an individual institute or topic or career path. Whereas pre orientation is gearing you up for your freshman year and helping you get to know Wake Forest and what to expect as a college student. Um, moving on, I see 1 other question about. Is my son eligible to apply for summer immersion if he's waitlisted for acceptance into first year college this fall? And that is yes, you are eligible to apply for summer immersion if you're waitlisted for college or if you're deciding to do a gap year. We definitely still welcome your application and interest in participating in our summer program. Uh, the next question I'm interested in the leadership program for my son as he's not quite sure what he wants to do. What types of people lead the discussions, activities, and leadership? Uh, Betsy or Lizzie, would you like to take that question? I can take that question. Um, so Marcus Sanderlin leads our leadership institute, and he works in the School of Business in um, the Office of Professional and Career Development, and He's a fantastic educator and very, very enthusiastic. And we're really pulling professionals from all different industries for leadership. So um, we're hearing from leaders at the university level. We're hearing from military leaders. We actually get to hear from um, Vice Admiral Forrest Faison, who was a former Surgeon General of the US Navy, who is a really incredibly powerful speaker. We get to spend the day at Second Harvest Food Bank, um, hearing from professionals in the nonprofit industry. Um, we're hearing from um, just lots of different industries for leadership. And then also there's just lots of discussion with um, 
with different Wake Forest students and small groups and kind of talking about what to expect um, in college as well. A few other questions um, have entered the chat. Are there any events for parents on Friday during the completion of their program? And each institute and adventure is different. On Sunday, when you check in, you'll receive the schedule for the week and you'll be able to see exactly where your son or daughter is every hour, every moment. And the capstone presentations are pretty much for the students and their peers. So we actually don't invite parents to come to the presentations. Um, given that pickup is at 12 noon and the presentations happen earlier that morning. Uh, there's a ne another question. What will transportation be like on Friday when the program is over for students who flew in? And I can answer that quickly. Um, we will have an airport shuttle if you have completed the travel and transportation survey to reserve your seat on the shuttle. We, you are able to ride our airport shuttle that is staffed with Wake Forest professional staff back to the PTI GSO. Um, Greensboro Triad Airport, the Piedmont Greensboro Triad Airport, if you decide to fly. And we strongly suggest that students book flights after 2.30 p.m. on Friday to allow travel time from campus to the airport and to allow the student to get through security on time. Are there any other questions I haven't answered? I'm just going through the chat right now just to make sure. Betsy, we got a question about the um, online medicine, the capstone project that they do. Sure. So for our um, online medicine course, um, the capstone project um, requires students to select a problem facing healthcare. And they research the um, different problems facing healthcare, and then they create a presentation on that problem and offer solutions for that problem um, in a PowerPoint presentation. They can record them, they can create a video, um, they can get really creative with how they kind of express, you know, what the problem facing healthcare is, the pr uh, proposed solutions, and then how they actually present their final capstone project. Once again, thank you so much for your interest and attention and participating in our pre college programs webinar this evening. Thanks so much um, for attending and asking fantastic questions. As always, if you have additional questions, do not hesitate to give us a call or send us an email and we look forward to meeting you all this summer. Have a great evening. Bye.